of Jesus. I ask that in this church, you will give us iPads. Amen. We'll not be writing on, on phones anymore. Amen. You will give us iPads. Amen. You will give us tablets. Amen. But Lord, I'm praying more of iPads. Amen. I don't want Androids in this church. Amen. Give us iOS, oh Lord. Amen. You are a God who gives. Amen. So may the Lord give you an iPad this week. Amen. Shout, I receive it. Amen. For those who believe it, you'll have it. You'll see. I told you your school fees will be paid. I was receiving testimonies here last week. That pastor, my school fees was paid in full. I didn't know I could do the exams, but my school was paid. That's because of receiving a declaration. The Bible says you shall believe, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. To prosper means to chalak. To chalak means to, uh, to surge forward. To chalak means to achieve. To chalak means to receive. To chalak means to, to, to break forth. So when, I, when, you re, when you believe in a prophet, you chalak, you break forth, you receive what believing in God cannot give you. You see, when you believe in God, you are established, you are nurtured. That's what the Bible says in uh, Second Chronicles 20, 20. You are nurtured, you are taken care of. Then that's one part. Then he says the second part now, believe in my prophets. So it is one thing to believe in the Lord, your God. And it's another thing altogether to believe in his prophets. When you believe in your God, you are established. You become an established Christian, a nurtured Christian. You are easy, you are nice, you are okay, everything is going for you, you will go to heaven, yes. But now there's another set of Christians who believe in God. And after believing in God, they believe in his prophets. As for those people, they are, they are, they are not only nurtured, they are also established. And not only are they established, they chalak, they break forth. They achieve much. They increase. So ask, your question, ask yourself this question. Where do you belong? And the answer is so simple. You want to know the answer? You can see it by the results of your life. If you don't believe in a prophet, you don't believe me as your prophet. You are just established. You are nurtured. But you don't receive miracles. Because miracles come from believing in a prophet. So a few announcements. Number one. Camp registration for December has begun today. So make sure you register. We're going to Eldoret. And I'm believing God that most of us will fly to Eldoret. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. I remember I told you this year we will fly, most of us. While others are going by bus, for TGL, we will fly. So the best thing, pay, how much is it? Has it been decided yet? Whatever they will say, remove the transport. Then that transport money Pay early so that we book your flight, Skyward, so that all of us fly in one. Amen. We book one, 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 one plane. Are we together? Yes. If you've never flown, this is your first. This will be your first time to fly, and it will be in the same plane with you. Can you imagine? Wow. If you've never pulled those bags in the airport, get ready to to pull them and 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 and, and make sure Instagram knows. <laughs> yeah, let them have no peace. You can do a live video on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on your status, on what else? P yeah, put some motivational quotes. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, interesting. Wow. On Tuesday, we have our brick and mortar experience. Wow, beautiful. So how many were here on Tuesday? If you're not here, where were you? Don't be a Sunday Christian. Lastly, I've been preaching in, in our Harvest Family Church in Kware for this week. And it has been awesome. Tell your neighbor it's been awesome. And today they are finishing their conference with a service in the evening. Their unquenchable fire service. So today the unquenchable fire will not be in the main sanctuary. It will be in Kware. For those who have never been to our church that is in Kware, it's a very nice church. You'll be surprised. You'll think you're not in Kware. So register. Then the bus will pick people. At what time? Four. Are we together? You are blessed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for today. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've been looking at a series, and the series we've called it, It's a Great Thing to Serve the Lord. And how many have seen that it's a great thing to serve the Lord? Can I receive one or two testimonies? Uh, Val, come and testify. Who else was giving me a testimony? Mwende? Yeah, come as well. 
And don't give us stories. You know, ladies, when they begin to speak, my God, they will tell you how they woke up that day, stand on this side. Yeah. You remember the Hutsuma Center? <laughs> so what happened? So me, well, yeah, you. used to... What's your name? <laughs> Start there. Valerie. Are you born again? Yes. Sama, kuma, let's do it like the old days. Kuma jina ni light of Valerie. Nimeokoka na nampenda Kristo kama mokozi wa maisha yangu. Je, wewe umeokoka? I do it like that. Kwa majina anaitwa Valerie, nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu. Ni mokozi wa maisha yangu, naenda mbinguni. So, Pasi uh, Pasi used to pray every Tuesday and Sunday that we'll receive school fees that we shall not lack. Our parents will not, like, what you want, you will get. And I've been struggling with school fees for as long as I can remember. And my mom wanted the, yo, karata, yeah, ya kuomba loan, ya kunilipia school fees. Can you imagine? Our school fees is 52,700. My mom didn't have the cash. But I kept, every time she used to ask, something would happen. My portal would crash. I could not download it. Something would just happen. Then, for those who are in MMU, remember we were told that we have a week before we finish paying school fees, or else we'll be deregistered. So me called my mom that Tuesday, and I was like, Mom, nsasa ntacha shule ju, wamese mwacha kwa deregistered. Ntacha shule nyeye ni olewe. Ehe, masin kidi. Ntacha kwa deregistered, na itakuwa story ingine tena kwanza. So my mom was like, Fini, how much? Ni kamambia 52,700. On, now, Friday, ndio funge portal. That Thursday evening, she sent me the, yo, karatasi ya bank. Bank Yeah, she paid everything. And on top of that, she also added me pocket money. What are you talking about? I'm saying, what are you talking about? So when I keep telling you, God will supply... Ah, uh, what's your problem? Nah. When I keep telling you that God will surprise you, it's this girl. God will supply all your needs. That's what I have to say. Yeah. When I keep telling you that God will supply all your needs, you think I'm joking. May God supply your needs. This week, may you have more than enough. And the reason what, what she didn't tell you is because she serves God. So God had to meet her need. I showed you the blessings of serving God. You shall serve the Lord your God. Simple. You may be serious. Wow, appreciate Jesus. That's a wonderful testimony. Well, when they come, give us your testimony. Wow. And don't give us stories. You know, ladies can tell you, ah, that day I woke up, nikatafuta ngo, nikakosa, nikavaa, nikatoa. So what happened? Um, and you're chewing. Uh, praise God. Um... My testimony is just like hers. Uh, so what is your name? Are you born again? <laughs> oh, I am Wende. I love Jesus. He's my savior. Yes. <laughs> okay, because of time, eh? So, if you don't pay fees, we had been given an alternative. Right? Of, why I am yeah, of a week. Actually, it was four days. So when I called my parents, we didn't know where we'd get the money. Like it was short notice. But then uh, when I told them, the fee was paid in two days in wow. full. After she, it was after a service, and I declare that God will meet your needs. Your school, I remember clearly. I said your school fees will be paid. When she went and called, they didn't have money, but because she is a servant of God, God had to meet her need. Our school fees was paid. Are you here and you serve God? Yes. Are you a servant of God? Yes. Then this week, get ready to be surprised by God. Yes. This week, you will fly. Yes. Hey, you don't believe you can fly in this week. This week, you shall receive iPads. Yes. This week, you will receive hard copy Bibles. Yes. You don't say amen for that one. This week, you shall receive hard copy Bibles. Yes. Hey, that's more important than anything. So today... I'm going to show you something else that people who serve God receive. And it is called, you will receive temple blessings. You receive temple blessings. And pastor, what are temple blessings? Don't worry, I'm going to show you. One thing you need to know about the kingdom of God is that everything that is done in this kingdom of God 
has a particular path that it leads to. Everything that is done in the kingdom of God has a path that it leads to. And this path, and each path, leads to a particular blessing. For example, tithing has a particular blessing because tithing is a particular path in the kingdom of God. So it has a particular blessing. Sacrifice is a path in the kingdom of God. And therefore, sacrificing has a particular blessing. Offerings is another path. The same thing with offering. Oh my God. What's happening today? Let me drink my lemon. <laughs> or is the microphone? But no one uses this microphone. Or is your mic? Now, offerings is a path in the kingdom of God. And that path has a particular blessings. Coming to church early has a particular blessing. Being a servant of God in the church has a particular blessing. Honoring your prophet or your pastor has a particular blessing. Remembering the poor has a particular blessing. Being a good person has a particular blessing. Coming to church early has a particular blessing. Giving your offering has a particular blessing. That's why the Bible says a little here, a little there. Because the kingdom of God is a cocktail. It's a concussion. You can't place at, the, at your blessings come from one thing. No. Your blessings come from various avenues. But every avenue has a particular blessing. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom where you are expected to do everything. Not to do just one part. You cannot just be paying your tithes and not giving your offerings. And expect to receive the blessings of those who give offerings. You understand? And you cannot be giving offerings and not paying tithes. And expect to receive the blessings of those who pay tithes. You get? Because everything has a particular blessing. The Bible says there is also a blessing for those who come to church and live. Those who walk to church, there is also a blessing in Zechariah. It is recorded in heaven, the kilometers you walked. So everything in the kingdom of God has particular blessings. And it's all in the Bible. So God is not a God of generalities. But God is a God of specifics. Tell your neighbor, God is not a God of generality. He is a God of specifics. This means everything he asks you to do, or everything that he asks you to do, he's asking you to do because there's a particular blessing that can only be activated by that particular thing. Because God is a God of specifics, not generalities. You understand? That's why he says, pay your tithes, give offerings, give sacrifices, serve in the temple, come to church early, blah, 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 all those things. Why? Because he's not a God of, even if he was a God of generality, he would have just said, do what? One thing, and everything will cover everything. But God is a God of specifics. Tell me about God is a God of specifics. Now, the people who serve God in the temple of God, day and night, have particular blessings that are particularly for them. Not for everyone else. Not for those who pay their tithes. Not for those who give offerings. Not for those who give sacrifices. This one is particularly to those who serve God. Do you serve God in the house of God? Then there is a particular blessing that is personally and dedicated wholesomely for you. Not for anyone else. For particularly you. Not for those who have a degree in church. Not for those who are doing, uh, who work for Safaricom in church. Not for everyone else. For particularly those who serve God in the house of God. That's why I keep telling you, serve God in his house. Because I understand and I know, and I'm going to show you a scripture right now. There is a particular blessing for only those who serve God in the house of God. So if you don't do anything in the house of God, Charlie, I'm sorry, but this blessing cannot come upon you. This blessing cannot be activated. This blessing is only for servants of God. This blessing is for those people who come early and arrange seats. This blessing is for those who usher you to show you where to sit. This blessing is for those who stand outside with placards to welcome you. This blessing is for sound guys. This blessing is for uh, keyboardists. This blessing is for drummers. This blessing is for particular people who are called servants of God, who serve in the temple of God. So do you serve God? The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7, 
15 to 17. I'm saying Revelation chapter 7. Why, why is it that you look like you don't understand what's happening? Revelation chapter 7. Look. If you hear DJ John Falme, what do you do? What do you DJ John? Revelation chapter 7 verse 15 So don't act as though you are holy here This is more holy than screaming for DJ Joe This is more holy than screaming for DJ Melo This will take you to heaven But DJ Melo will only take you to Melo experience Say Revelation chapter 7 verse 15 What, is, what does the Bible say? Can we all read? No, let's read like educated people 1, 2, 3 And do what? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And God will do what? Now give me NIV for the same verse. NIV. And let's start from verse 14 so that you see what's happening. And I answered, Sir, let's start 13. He's asking about who the ones dressed in white are. You're too slow, Isaac. Then one of the elders asked, This in white robes. Who are they? And where did they come from? Mm -hmm. I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. Uh -huh. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his and he who sits on the throne will, sp will spread his tent over what? Yes. Now, spreading his tent means spread his presence. Uh -huh. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So this is a wonderful picture of people who serve God in the temple. This vision, because this was a vision that was given to John, is showing us what really it means to serve God in his temple. One of the greatest blessings that you can ever have is the blessing of having to serve God in his temple. Another great blessing is when you serve God, God is he that looks unto you. Nobody else is mandated to look unto you when you start serving God. God himself is mandated to look unto you. By the way, when you decide to serve God in his temple, he takes it upon himself to take care of you. So if you serve God in totality, and serve God in his temple. God will himself take care of you. I came to declare that God is going to take care of you. Amen. God himself is going to take care of you. Amen. God will take care of your needs. Amen. God will take care of your school fees. Amen. God will take care of your job. Amen. God will take care of your career. Amen. God will take care of your heart. Amen. God will take care of your relationships. Amen. God will take care of your boyfriend. Amen. God will take care of your girlfriend. Amen. You don't need to spy on them. God will take care of them. Hey, you don't need to put a spy camera on them. No, 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 no. God will take care of them. I'm saying God will take care of them. So the great blessing of serving God cannot be compared to anything else on earth. Everything else that you serve or anything else that you do cannot be compared in any way with serving God. When you serve God, you ask God himself to take care of you. Do you realize how important that it is? That God himself is taking care of you. In other cases, he sends angels to take care of you. 
He says, angels, go and do this. But when you start serving him, he himself, he comes down personally to take care of you. Can you imagine? So that is the greatest blessing you can ever have. It is greater than anything. It cannot be compared to anything. The Bible says in uh, Psalms chapter 27 verse 4, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So what you should desire is to be in the house of God. The person who was writing this psalm is called David. David was a king. And he's saying one thing that I've desired is not to be in the palace. One thing I've desired is not to have a million girlfriends. One thing that I've desired is not to have houses and chariots. One thing I've desired is not to drive a Lamborghini. One thing I've desired is not to drive a Porsche. One thing I've desired is not to be the president of Kenya. One thing I've desired is not to be an MP. One thing I have desired is to dwell in the house of the Lord. To inquire in his presence on a daily basis. To serve him day and night. That is what I desire. And the person who is saying this is a king. Sembuse wewe. Prefect. Class rep. Class rep. You are saying one thing I have desired is that I may dwell in the staff room of my teacher. No. One thing I have desired is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Hey, is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Not one thing I have desired is to work for Safaricom. Hey, one thing I have desired is to work for Airtel. Oh, one thing I desire is to work for the Central Bank of Kenya. Ah. Oh, as for me and my house, one thing I have desired is to serve the Lord, is to seek the Lord and dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So the good news is that you don't have to get to heaven to serve God. You don't have to get to heaven so that you start serving God. No. You can serve God in his temple on earth. Because do you know that Jesus has a temple on earth? Do you know that Jesus has a temple on earth? You must learn to talk to me. Do you know that Jesus has a temple on earth? Yes. Why are you quiet? When I'm preaching, you should not be quiet. You talk to me. Are we together? Yes. It's a conversation. It's dialogue. I talk, you talk. It's not monologue. It's not like I'm preaching to deaf people. When you're preaching to de deaf people, you don't expect any response. You only expect. But as for you, are you deaf? Yes. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? Yes. Okay, do this. Ah, the other hand, put it down. The other hand. Put it down. I ah, do this. Okay, do this and don't hit your neighbor. <laughs> you know you could be having a beef. Don't solve it now. Put it back. The other one. Have you in any way had Have you had any sound? Have you had? Like have you? Have you had that? That means you're alive. You're not in a coffin. The day you do this, and this, and this, and this, and you hear, you should know you're in a coffin. You're dead. You're six foot under. But as long as you, do, you can do this, you can do this, and hear nothing, it means you are alive. And if you're alive, you should be giving the Lord the loudest praise that you can. You should be screaming and shouting. Why? You are alive. Listen, it is only in a mortuary that the place is quiet. Only a mortuary is quiet. Because in a mortuary there is no life. But if you go to a maternity, hey, where there is life, where life is being brought forth, is it a, is it a, si a silent place? Is it a quiet place? Man, if you've never been to a maternity, you don't know. But you ca you've passed by. You've passed by. I've been there because I've visited people who are giving birth. They make noise. They are not still. They don't care. How, they just scream. Because life comes with screams. So if you're alive, you should be someone who is screaming. Because life comes with screams. That's what the Bible says. Give the Lord a joyful noise. <laughs> no, that's not joyful. That's mad. <laughs> so give the Lord a joyful noise. So when I'm preaching, so when I'm preaching, you should be saying, preach, pastor, preach. You should be saying, Pastor, you're blessing me. You should be saying, thank you, Pastor. Yeah, not just keep it quiet and looking at me. What are you talking about? So let me show you rewards 
or let's look at temple rewards of serving God. Temple rewards. Number one, the Bible says in Revelation that we just read, chapter six, uh, chapter seven, verse sixteen. Let me first explain to you what this whole thing is talking about. Now, John received a vision. And after he received a vision, he saw that in the temple of the Lord in heaven, people were bowing down to serve God. They were bowing down in worship and adoration. And they were serving God. And as they served God, God was so happy. So he said, I shall spread my presence on them. And because they have decided to serve me, these particular blessings will come on them. So there are particular blessings that come on people who decide to serve God. And blessing number one. Are you ready for this one? Are you sure you are ready for this one? But you don't look like you are ready. Are you sure you are ready? Do you want me to give you this one? Now blessing number one. You shall no longer be hungry. No more hunger. That means you will no longer lack food. I'm saying you will no longer lack food. The Bible says, never again will they hunger. Eh, pastor, eh, miss kuzangi food. Mtu wangu kulangi lunch ulio unaongea hapa. Yule kukosa food, unanga do ya lunch. But when you start serving God, you will no longer hunger. It is you who will say, I don't feel like eating. But when you serve God, you realize that in southern Sahara, how many people die of, of what is it called? Of hunger. Starvation. So many people. Starvation is really in Africa. And by the way, Kenya is in Africa. If you don't know. That should tell you the potential of dying of starvation is there. There is scarcity here. My friend, you're in Africa. Hey, hey tell your neighbor, neighbor. TIA. This is Africa. Chochote chaweza. Chochote chaweza tokea. We could be peaceful right now as a country. The next thing, we have drought. The next thing, there is no food. Kama makiri kwa chakula, kwa sukari, ninini atuwezi pata? We can't get anything. So you should realize that when you serve God, you have an insurance policy. And the insurance policy, number one benefit of that policy is you will no longer be hungry. Like you shall never lack food. Food is integral, my friend. Food is key. Ask the ladies who eat here. They will tell you how they have crashed on parties because of food. They will tell you how they have, they have been told, come to KFC, I'll buy you food. And they left. They even decided to walk to Langata, to Galeria, just to get food. Because food is key, my friend. So when God is telling you, you shall no longer be hungry, he means you shall no longer lack. Amen. You will be well fed. Amen. You will be taken care of. Amen. I came to prophesy to you. God has said that you shall no longer be hungry. So none among you again will be hungry. None among you will be lacking again. When you need food, you will have food. You'll be buying food for people. Amen. Your fridge will be full of food. Amen. I'm saying, if you don't have a fridge, receive a fridge. Amen. Receive a fridge. Amen. And that fridge will be full of food. Amen. You'll be eating with forks and knives. Amen. You'll no longer be eating with your hands. Uh -uh, you will eat with forks and knives. Amen. You will eat at Villa Rosa. Amen. You will eat at Radisson Blue. Amen. You will eat at Park Inn. Amen. You shall visit nice, nice places to eat. Because you'll have plenty of you serve God, you eat like a king. The Bible says, I shall prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. Now, what is the work of a table? Is it to stand on? Is it to sleep on? The work of a table is to do what? It's to display food. So when food is kept there, you eat. You sit down and eat like a king. I came to declare to you, your time to eat like a king has come. Your time to eat like a king has come. No more KDF. No more Chafua. Hey, no more chafua. You will sit down and eat. They will not be keep, they will not be putting food for you on paper bags again. You are to make a ta. Ah, you are to make a ta. Hey, food on in paper bag. How? Juice in plastics, and you feel like you are a king, and you become proud, and you eat on paper bags. My friend, if you're a servant of God, get ready to eat in plenty. Amen. Get ready to eat like a king. Amen. Hey, what are you talking about? Amen. You will no longer be hungry. Amen. And by the way, you will not have the food disease. There is food disease. Food disease is the disease of lack of food. What is it called? Marasmus. Is it marasmus? Kwashiako. It's marasmus. 
You will not have marasmus. You will be fed of the Lord. You will not be hungry. What does the Bible say? Never again will they do what? You think God lacked something to, to say? Or you think he lacked a blessing to give people? He gave them that blessing because that's key. That's important to a human being. Food is important to you. Stop acting holy here. I know you like eating. I know you like eating. Look at the lady with makeup next to you. Tell I know you. I know you. <laughs> They're acting holy and intimidating me. So you will not intimidate me. I know you like food. So you shall no longer be hungry. I'm saying you shall no longer be hungry. KFC will be a local shop for you. KFC will be a local shop for you. Java will be a local restaurant. Amen. Or you don't believe it. Believe. You know, there are days I used to save to go to Java. I was reminding her someday. I was telling her, do you remember that we used to save for a whole month to go to Java? We used to save to buy pizza. To changa. Yeah, not only save changa. We are to a so many to a so to a mini jalakula peace mob. And you can only eat pizza on Tuesday so that you get the free one. Yeah. But nowadays, you eat pizza when you want. It's a phone call away. Yeah. You just say, look, I'll bring pizza. And they bring. You walk into Java like it's a normal nothing to you. That shall be your story, my friend. Yeah. You shall be walking into Java like nothing. Yeah. You shall be walking into Villanosa like nothing. Yeah. By the grace of God, right now, there's no hotel I can't walk in. Yeah. I don't need to plan. Yeah. At your, I'm planning next month. Yeah. At this time, I'll go. Yeah. No. I feel like we need to eat. You just walk in and eat. One time we were walking with a particular lady in town. Then we felt hungry. Then the restaurant that was close to us was CJ. You know CJ? The new joint. We entered and ate. Satisfied. Satisfied. Because you shall no longer be what? And CJ is here, Shilingi Billy. You know you have to... <laughs> you will not be saving to go there. I'm saying you will not be saving to go there. God will meet your needs. You don't believe it. My friend, there are people who, who are doing what I'm saying right now. Even in this congregation, there are people who are doing what I'm saying. But for you, because you are a servant of God, tables are turning. I'm saying tables are turning. You shall receive more than enough. You'll sit down and eat like a king. Who said you have to get to 50 to go to Villa Rosa? Who said you have to be over 30 to go to Buddhism Blue? Who said you have to get to 30 to, be, to visit Safari Park? No, you will sit down and eat. You will eat crocodile meat. Have you eaten crocodile meat? Crocodile meat, damn. You will lick your fingers. Get ready to eat of crocodile food. Crocodile meat you shall eat. Zebra's meat you shall eat. Gazelle meat you shall eat. You will visit Villa Rosa. You will visit Carnivore. What are you talking about? You'll, you'll go and sit down at carnival and say, bring all that I can eat. All types of meats. Which, which type of meats do you have? Bring everything. All you can eat. They just bring and chop. You, you are just chopping. What is that? Crocodile. What is that? Snake. What is that? What is that? Kata. You know, as some don't even know, you just see them coming, you say, kata iyo. Kata iyo. Kata iyo. You shall no longer be hungry. Aish. What are you talking about? Number two. You will no longer be thirsty. The Bible says never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. Now thirst is another story, my friend. Water is another story altogether. Ukta could you imagine him? Uliza what was a mess you lay in a match. Nigani yo. Nigani yo go up and in a match. And my mum gonna match. Enough. Nazarinum gonna match. O imported water. Quayam gonna match. I want to issue Queen Jim gonna match enough. Ukta could you imagine him? Uliza to a con a chalk on Yumba, Naina match. You will know how important it is to have water. You, you can't visit the toilet, and it's your toilet, but you can't go in. Because if you go in, what will you use to flush? So water is important, my friend. Water is important. Tell your neighbor, water is important. And Bible is saying, never will you thirst again. You will not thirst of water. I'm saying you will not thirst of water. 
You will not thirst of anything. You know, there are different types of thirst. There are people who thirst for money. You will not thirst again. There are people who thirst for cars. You will not thirst again. You will not thirst to travel abroad. Traveling abroad will be a phone call away. I was telling somebody, look, I'm tired of planning to travel. Like you have to plan and pay the flight ticket in advance. Like two months so that the flight ticket is relatively cheap. I am tired of that. I want, when I want to travel, I say I'm traveling on Monday. Book my flight today. That's it. Or I'm traveling tomorrow. Book it today. That's the kind of life I want. Don't you want that kind of life? <laughs> Chat, you are, we are traveling in August. So we are in July. So we need to pay <laughs> the flight in two months so that the flight is cheap. That shall not be your story. Amen. You shall not be thirsty. Amen. I'm saying you shall not be thirsty. Amen. Anything you need, God shall supply. Amen. Don't say amen if you're not a servant of God. If you don't do anything in the temple, just keep quiet. As for those who work for God, yeah. you shall not be thirsty. Yeah. You shall not be thirsty. Yeah. God will meet your needs. Yeah. God will meet your needs. Yeah. Do you believe it? I believe. Shout, I believe it. I believe it. So number one, you will not be hungry. Number two, you will not thirst. Number three, Protection from the sun. They shall receive protection from the sun. The Bible says, the sun will not beat upon them. Do you realize what the sun can do when it begins to hit on you? This, you know, the sun has not hit on you. When the sun hits on you, you get cancer. You get cancer. That's skin cancer. Why do people apply sunscreen? To protect themselves from the sun rays, right? Because the sun can cause cancer on your skin. Now that is medically speaking. Financially speaking, when the sun hits on you, uliza kiatu. Uliza kiatu. When the sun decides to hit on you, now one thing you don't know, you guys, there are things called the elements. Do you know what the elements are? The element is the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, and there are five. The wind. I've forgotten the other one. Re yeah, no, rain is not an element. Yeah, it's, it's caused by the elements. So what, what you don't know, the elements have influence over your life. The elements want, oh, and, and see, water. The elements wanted to kill Jesus. You remember when he was crossing over in the boat while he was asleep? The elements arose. The devil rode on the air element and decided to kill Jesus using water. That's why he wanted to drown him when his disciples were waking up. But when he woke up, he said, peace, be still. So most of you, you don't realize that the elements have an influence over life. The elements can decide to end your ministry. The elements can decide to end your life. They can decide to make you poor or rich. That is why people go to palm readers. Who are palm readers? What do they do? They tell you your star is do you see water, whatever? Capricorn, Scorpion, Pisces, what are those? Stars. Stars are elements. Elements can, I'm going to, that's a whole topic. It's, it's, a, it's called the law of intercession. You have to intercede against those things. You have to declare, the sun has to work for my good. The moon has to favor my cause. The stars have to favor my cause. They have to align to my cause. That's why God is saying, the sun will not beat them down. He knows what he's saying. That's what the Bible says. He shall preserve your soul even forevermore. In Psalms, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul even forevermore. Why is he saying that? Because those things have power. That's why they are used by witches. That's why they are used by palm readers. That's why the devil uses them to influence things on earth. You're shocked. You didn't know that. Now you know. So when God is saying that the sun shall not beat them down, he's declaring that the sun has to work for your favor. The sun will not be scorching hot on you. When the sun is scorching hot on you, you are poor. You try everything, nothing works. You pray, nothing works. You fast, nothing works. You believe, nothing. When the sun is hot on you, my friend, eh? You don't know what you're saying. You don't know. Tell me you don't know. The sun is. We say scam to me parara. Suti, eh? Ni suti ndio. Lakini uku. 
imechapwa na jua shati eh kiatu socks jeans belt hey sura imekauka imechapwa na jua the sun has to work for your favor that's why in dubai the sun is so hot but the guys are so rich why the sun is working for their favor they are, look muslims know what is the symbol of islam by the way a moon and you know what that means i will not tell you i'll tell you one day but they know how to influence those things to work for their favor that's why the bible says oh unto the children of light because the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light so the sun will not hit you by day Amen. i'm saying the sun will not hit you by day Amen. nor the moon by night Amen. god will preserve your soul Amen. i'm saying god will preserve your soul Amen. shout the loudest amen. amen the sun will not hit your education I'm saying the sun will not hit your education. Amen. The sun will favor your education. Amen. I'm saying the sun will favor your education. Amen. The sun will favor your career. Amen. The moon will favor your calling. Amen. The moon will favor your st- hey. Amen. Your stars will align. Amen. I'm saying your stars will align. Amen. Hey. Amen. What are you talking about? They shall no longer hunger. Neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them. Meaning the sun can cause destruction. If you want to know the sun can cause destruction, ask those people who are in the northern Antic, where the sun has been hitting the ice and melting it. I was watching a jog, uh, whatever by NASA. The real NASA. See NASA ya Kenya. The real one. And they were showing how the nini is melting. The ice. At a very fast rate. So the Eskimos are in trouble. Because their land is in Asia. The sun can cause destruction, my friend. I mean, do not heard that the sun was too hot that it melted cars in America. In Texas. Now that's another one. I'm coming to it. When the sun is too hot, it's dangerous. My friend, you don't know what you're saying. That's why I keep telling you, you don't know life. Life is more spiritual than physical. What, 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 you, know, you, what you think you know, you don't know. Tell your neighbor you don't know. Life is spiritual. That's why you don't just live life. At here. I mean, I used to do a and a toboa. I mean, dreams, aspirations, a toboa. My friend. My friend, you don't know. A toboa. A toboa, a toboa, a toboa. Life is spiritual. Look, there are people who are chanting at night against your name. Calling your name and saying, Oh, may the sun work against them. In dark places, in wicked altars, they're mentioning your name in wicked altars. In altars of poverty, they're calling your name. Witches know your name. They just know your face and I don't know what I came to declare the sun has to work for your good. Amen. No wicked power Amen. can mention your name in wicked places. Amen. When they mention your name, yes. in the place of your name, yes. may the God of fire answer. Amen. May the God of fire answer. Amen. These are the prayers I make when I'm making warfare intercession. Me, you can't mention my name in dark places. I cannot, I cannot answer. When you mention mine, do you realize that your spirit can answer? Recently, I was prophesying in, in a certain church. And as, as I was prophesying, the spirit of God revealed to me a certain lady. She's called Susan. She was serving in the, you remember, the present worship. So I called her by the word of prophecy. said, Susan, who is Susan here? I went where the present worship was. And she said she's the one. She came. So for God, of course, to prove that I'm not saying my own things. I told her her sister's name. And I told her why her sister is going to get married. So that she believes that I'm a prophet. Not that I had seen her. We, we had never talked. Then I told her that witches have been mentioning the name of your sister in a certain place called this and this. I will not tell you the name. 
She told me, yes. They have been doing that to us. And they have been causing our family to struggle. My friend, the spirit world is real. You don't know what you're saying. The spirit world, ask Nigerians. They will tell you. In Nigeria, it is either you're with God. Is it true? It's either you're with God or this other side. They look for protection. Hey, it is only you that you don't know how spiritual things are. As I'm saying this, I sense the anointing so strong. The presence of God can deliver you from such things. So don't live your life like a fool with happenstance. At anything, happenstance. Me, I just live my life. Live my life. Live my life. Live my life. Fika 30 to tell me to honor God as your statement. Get to 30. Get to 30. 30 on a job. Bado na ngangana. Mabetu zako wote washa make it. We bado na tembeanga mkutu. Uda samanga tu bora uhai. Eh? You should be saying man as me. You don't know. That's why I'm saying people don't know. Ah, mini mujanjes. Eh, mini mujanjes. Mini ule mse. When ule mse, keep living. Saini venya nyinyu wote ni mahasla. Ngoje wote kwa na mabetu zako wametokelezea. Wewe uko tu bado ligi ya kuhaso. Utaanza kusema mimi kuanzia leo mimi si hasla. Hii maisha sitaki ya kuhaso. Eish. Why did I tell you that story? Or to tell you how 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 how, how real <laughs> You don't know what you are saying. Another case in that particular church. That church it was infested by demonic activities. Another guy I called him by his name. I called him actually by his grandfather's name. He was at the back. I told him, come. And oh, that's a, another story now. The first day. I'll finish the other one. I just remembered another one, which is sweeter than the other one. The first day, when I went there, I, did, <laughs> I, did, you see? I aligned them. Let me align them. So the first day when I went to that church, I was prophesying. I called another lady by the word of God. I didn't know her. I called, I told her, you oh, Gary, come. She came. When she came, of course, as a prophet, you must make people first believe that you are a prophet of God. So you give them information that only they know. And you, the two of you. So I told her, you are a banker. And you work in this organization. She told me, yes, I work in this organization. Am I lying, Jenny? You are there, right? So I told her, you've been struggling because of what your mother went and did at a particular place. She told me, yes, it's true. Of course, that you don't say on the microphone. You say in the ear. Because that's private information. She told me, yes, my, my mother consults. To con do not just to consult. To consult is to visit shrines and witchcraft. She told me, yes, my mother does that. So we've been struggling because of that. Because the spirit world is real. When the Bible is saying the sun will not beat them down, God knows what he's saying, my friend. You, you, it is only you who is foolish. You think that life is that the way you are. At me, but I'm not going to make up. I'm not going to make up. I'm going to have 400 Instagram followers. Foolish. Instagram does not give you deliverance. Instagram does not give you spiritual deliverance. Being famous does not deliver you. You can be famous and poor. You can be famous and miserable. But as long as you're a servant of God, I came to declare to you that the sun will not beat you down. I'm saying the sun will not beat you down. They cannot mention your name in evil altars. They can't mention your name in evil altars. When they mention your name, may fire appear in your place. They can't give you for anything. The Bible says, and I shall give men in exchange for your lives. That means even the devil does that. Do you know what it means to give men in exchange for your lives? It means in your place, and God forbid, for purposes of illustration, if he was to die, God says, I'll give a person in exchange for him. So someone else dies in his place. That is to tell you demons also do the same. Or you don't realize that the devil does exactly opposite of what God does. He is just he copies and uses it. He's an imitator. So others were supposed to die. Then because the spirit of death has come and you are there, it carries you. Have, you. have you ever wondered? Somebody is so young. He's like 22 years. Then all of a sudden he slept and never woke up. Or have you seen a family that people die in a row? It's like every year, a certain month, people die. You think it's not it's natural? 
ati imeandikwa tu siku fulani 2016 ni baba yake 2017 ni mama yake 2018 ni yeye you think it's normal are the first bones god did the same thing in, to the egyptians he came and killed all their first bones he allowed the angel of death to visit and kill why am i telling you these stories God is interested with you being delivered. He's interested with your spiritual life. So don't live life like a fool. You you are just living. Mimi naishi tu. Si bora uhai pastor. Kwani iko nini? Si bora niko campus. Unaweza kuwa campus. You work so hard but never get a job. I know someone. I met them in Naivasha. They have two degrees. Of course I call them by the word of prophecy. Two degrees, two concrete degrees, but they have never gotten a job. Never. You know why? When they were in form four, someone took their name and laid it on a wicked altar. And that altar said, "You will, whoever you know, when you any time, even when you lay an offering here, this is an altar, right? When you lay an offering here, there is something you've spoken to that offering, right? So that offering has to respond." because this is an altar it has to respond in the spiritual realm so someone took his name that's why waganga tell you come with a goat come with a blue chicken come with a black goat because every altar there must be a sacrifice to the instruction so he, they took his name went and laid it on the altar and said as for this one he will work hard he will go to university but he will never get a job 7 years after graduating seven good years after graduating he had never gotten a job seven do you know how bad it is to be do you know how even how painful it is how emotionally degrading it is to have two degrees and seven years you have no job you are tamaking seven but that day i was preaching this particular message this one this particular one and i was at the same point the son i called him i told him so and so you come from this location blah 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 of course by word of prophecy the by the holy spirit he told me he told me yes i told him you been t- i seen you struggling and tamaki for all this time he told me yes I told him the reason is this and this He told me by the way I asked him are you aware of something like that he told me pastor by the way my mother had mentioned something like that but I brushed it I said I is a can me only wongo hizo vitu azikuwa hiyo kuni the mother had mentioned unajua kwa mama na wana siasa ati labda ni yango yako amekufanya hivi la yango yake so just siasa za mama so I said ah. I told her I told him now listen by the power given to me by the holy spirit and by authority as a prophet i call forth for your name and i will decree and i declare in your place let them that cost you suffering let double of that come on them after i left my vasha i think three weeks the pastor called me he told me guess what the guy you prayed for has been employed by nation media Then guess what? One of their immediate relatives has gone to be with the Lord. Immediately in my heart, I knew. I said the one who caused him trouble, he will go. Three weeks. Because the spirit world is real than the physical world. You could be here and you're tired. They said this one will last be a slave queen. So when I sing to my shayako na tabia tu za slay queen you don't think anything else have you seen such kind of ladies they don't think anything else they just think makeup and nails and heels and looking good upstairs mumu nothing nothing empty they just thinking makeup heels and nails fake nails of course and when they walk they think like the heaven is theirs and the earth is their fathers 
not knowing that somebody in another altar has said this one will just be a slave queen all the rest of his life. So they are at 40. Have you seen such women? They are at 40 but they are acting like they are 20. And they have nothing to show. Maybe somebody somewhere. I'm saying maybe. That is not always the case. But maybe. Somebody went to an altar and he said, this one, slay queen till death. And you, don't, you joke around with church. You joke around with serving God. You don't know what it gives you, my friend. Serving God gives you protection. There are some places where your name cannot be mentioned. If you want to, if you want to believe what I'm saying is true, you go try and mention my name in wicked places. You will see what will appear. You go, try, experiment. You will see. I'm saying this with so much confidence and authority. Try. Try. When we started this church, they told me that churches around this place don't grow. That's what they told me. When I, when I came here, one year, we are 200. One year. One year. One year. One. Churches have been here. Churches have been here. Ten years. Fifty. At a fifty new age. You go on a fifty year when mega. When the bishop. My friend, there are people who carry divine authority. Endowed by God. It is the anointing, not me, of course. It is the anointing. The anointing makes the whole difference. Desire the anointing. And the only way you can get the anointing is serve God. These blessings will come on you. The sun will not beat you down. No, the scorching heat. That's another blessing. The heat. Heat waves. You know heat waves. We show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to read heat rush. How uncomfortable is it? Is it uncomfortable? So imagine that the devil causes you to always have a heat rush. Not, it may not be physical. It could be financial. It could be emotional. Your, husband, your boyfriend is like a heat rush. <laughs> Anytime you are with him, you are uncomfortable. Your wallet is like a heat rush. It comes and goes. <laughs> you don't know. My friend, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. This world is spiritual. Recently, I was just prophet. I was inquiring that particular church. And I called another guy. In the spirit, I was seeing him roaming. To and fro, just walking. Then I was wondering, why is this guy just walking in the spirit? Okay, he's standing. Physically, he's standing. But when I, when, because I was in the spirit, he's just moving around. Moving to and fro. Then I called him. I told him, my friend, come. I see you walking to and fro. What do you do? He told me, Pastor, it's true. I'm a hustler. I have nothing. I just walk to and fro. To and fro. And then I asked him, I see you have a knowledge on computers and IT. He told me, yes, Pastor, I have done computer science. But he's moving to and fro. To and fro. To. With computer science degree. Hustler. I even actually for, I forgot to, to, to inquire what, what, what he... How he, which, which, what is it called? Which class he graduated in? Walking to and fro. Because the spiritual world is real. It is real. It is realer than real, my friend. It could be your father is sickly 24-7. It's not normal sickness. Somebody somewhere has declared. This one. Yeah. My friend. I'm going to ask you to the movie. And you have from cinema. Eh? It's not Afro cinema. If you want to know, ask someone who comes from Kitui. <laughs> this thing is real, my friend. The spirit world is real. Is it is real. So the remedy for this is you either hide yourself in God or you suffer. And how do you hide yourself in God? Start serving God. Start serving God. Start serving God. What reason? Another story. Hey, today I have so many stories. In the very same church, in the very same church, I was prophesying. When I began to prophesy, I saw a witch seated at the back. A witch. And I went to her and touched her. And she knew me and I knew her. 
or not I, I in Jesus name hey father in Jesus name may it never be her case oh she hey what are you saying justas justas is saying from Kitui. we rebuke you justas so i stood i called the lady to the front of course that one i didn't tell anyone i just called her, the two of us i told her Like I told her, if you misbehave, I misbehave. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means if you behave stupidly, I'll show you that I come from a higher power. I'll also behave stupid. I told her, because you know you can't deliver a witch. You can't deliver them. Because that's the decision they made. Not unless they decide they want to be delivered. You can't go telling them, ah, no. They have to decide they want to come out. The lady kept quiet, went back, sat at the back, did not say a word until the meeting was over. Then, after that, I wanted to tell the pastor, but then I said, no, let me not say. I kept quiet. When I'm preaching like this, by the grace of God, God has given me the office of a prophet. I see so much in people. So a lot. I see a lot. But sometimes I just say, oh God, remember your people. But for today, this is the blessing I'm living with. If you choose to serve God, Revelation 16, 17, 16 shall be your story. I don't need to prophesy in this church. And by the way, you know the reason why I don't prophesy so much in this church is because most of you, I know you by name. So when I call you by the name, you will think you are a But when in a, I'm in a foreign place, I don't know anyone. So when I call you by name, you see the power of the Holy Spirit. When I tell you your sister's name, I tell you your father's name, you see the power of God. One day, I'm believing God that I'll give, you, I'll give people their number. I've not gotten there yet. But I'm believing God. One day I'll be like Prophet Ousi. You know Prophet Ousi? He comes to HQ. He says, your name is Mark. No, he does this. Has this. These are two marks. He says, there are people who you are called Mark. You and you. Both of you come. They come. Then he says, now, for you to be uh, to know that I am a, I'm a, a more mature prophet, not like Prophet Boni who is still growing. That's what he said. It's Mark Gadige. 0713-888-721. Is it true? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Just like that. I've not, got, I've not gotten to that, that realm of, to, to be there in the spirit of to your matitis. You so pray for me. At one day I'll know your number. When I know your number, it will be so good for you. So why did I tell you that? Oh, to show you. Watch it mean. Sit down. Mark. Number five. They shall be fed of the Lord. The Bible says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. When you start serving God, expect God to feed you. You will be pampered and loved. Because you are a servant of God. When God is feeding you, God is feeding you with fatness of land. The Bible says the fatness of the land belongs to me. Sil Silver and gold belongs to me. So when God is feeding you, he's giving, sit up right, my friend. He's giving you all those things. God is going to feed you. By the way, do you realize something about this scripture? God says they shall no longer be thirsty. They shall no longer be hungry. Then in verse 17 he says, For the lamb which sits at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God, no, verse, King James, King James. Faster. For the lamb which sits in the midst of the throne shall feed them. But in the, in the previous verse, verse 15, the Bible says they shall no longer be hungry. So is, what is easier? For God. See, God and I have removed hunger. So I don't need to feed them. Right? But he says, I will remove hunger. Then I myself will feed them. I don't know whether you get that. 
I will remove hunger, then I will feed them. My God, I don't know whether you are understanding what I'm saying. I will remove hunger, then I will feed them. When God says that he's going to feed you, he's saying that I will show personal interest to make sure that your needs are well met. So when God is saying, I'll feed you, he's saying, I'll personally be involved. When someone is feeding you, they are personally involved. Is it not true? So get ready to see God personally involved in your issues. God will feed you with nice things. Hey, God will feed you with nice things. God will feed you with nice things. God will wrap you with nice things. Hey, get ready to, 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 to have nice colognes, to have nice suits, to have nice shoes, to have nice dresses. Hey! Hey, Basta, I don't want shoes. I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about one shoe worth 10,000. One shoe worth 20,000. Just one. Do you believe it? God will feed you with nice clothes. God will feed you with nice shoes. So God will help you. God will help you. And believe in his prophets. Believe and serve God. Today I've preached off my message and I hope I've helped somebody. Father, thank you for every soul that is listening to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm praying for everyone here under the sound of my voice. Remember their story. Change their course. Lord, meet them at the point of need. Father, in the name of Jesus, every eye closed, all heads bowed. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Let their hearts be touched today to serve you. Let them be willing to go out, to reach out for you, and to serve you, Lord, to make sure that, Lord, things are working as you'd want them to work. Jesus, remember them. Lord, remember them. I pray, oh God, that you shall meet their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are blessed.